All right, yes, this is the video you've been waiting for uh, to bust some myths about AI in audio. This term has certainly been thrown around a lot recently and uh, we are also partied throwing around this term, but for legit reasons. <laughs> Again, um, I'm enjoying speaking to you on this channel. I have recently started, uh, you know, making some more videos and content on our Tone Empire channel. Uh, I have been asked to request you for a subscribe before I even present the content. So I'm asking you um, if you want to watch some of this content that I'm making, I would appreciate it deeply if you would subscribe. Okay, so let's get on with uh, business. So I've made a point um, list, you know, of things people have been asking us on our social media and also uh, you know, other places. So I made a collection of certain common questions, I think, um, and so certain common confusions about AI and what exactly it's doing, what it's not doing, and what its real play is in audio and music and tools that you're using every day. So let's start with uh, the first point. I've got it right here. Uh, the types of AI in music and in mixing tools. So basically, AI in music is a different thing. Basically, uh, you have certain tools which are creating, uh, you know, music on their own and all of that. So we are not going to that specific part yet. Okay. So these are tools which are either separating stems of um, music into different instruments and all of that. We are not going into that. We are basically going to talk about AI tools in audio mixing. So that's what we're going to stick about. Okay. So how these are working, what different type of tools they are in this particular space which is mixing and then how they work what they do and what they don't do so the question is what is ai actually doing in plugins okay so basically there are two types of uh things that ai can do in a plugin number one is uh parameterization control by ai basically means that um all the parameters on your particular plugin or any manufacturer doing that is going to make certain decisions for you like maybe some people offer a compressor which they claim has AI and what they mean by that, not us, okay, is that uh, the AI will make decisions based on the transient response or certain other things to, you know, change the threshold, the ratio and all of that. So it's basically making decisions on your behalf. So that's one type of AI. So that's, uh, you know, parameterization control by AI, okay. In our plugin, the LBL01, we don't do that, okay. Why we consider it the first uh, actual model plugin is because the AI is being trained with a real compressor, that's an other type of AI, where you use AI and specific department of AI called machine learning, okay? In which case, like I had explained in another video before, uh, that we feed it data, which is raw data of different type of sounds, music, genres, vocals, instruments, blah, blah, blah. And then we make uh, a processing with an analog hardware. In this case, it was a compressor that I built. And then we went to different settings and made, uh, you know, recorded passages of that raw data after it was processed and then gave it to the AI and AI figured out exactly what was happening. It figured out whether it was compressing or saturating, at what point it was compressing, what point it was saturating all of that and spit out a model. So basically generating a model using machine learning is the second type of AI. That's the kind of AI that we use. All right. So let's go on to third question is AI making decisions for me. <laughs> so again, like I said, um, you know, in certain type of uh, tools, it is like I, I believe Isotope and Sonable, these are two companies uh, who are making tools where AI is making decisions for you. You know, it's changing parameters and various things uh, based on your material, your transient response, your taste or certain guidelines you give it. It's going to make decisions for you. In our case, again, like I said, where plugins are being modeled or trained using machine learning, there's no such thing happening. You are making the decisions. This model is already trained and now it's like any you know, normal processing plugin for you to use. The only difference is that machine learned plugins are going to be more accurate and more analog sounding in our opinion, because it's grabbing various changes that are happening to your sound, not just, you know, point to point measurements we do on circuit models, which may or may not be that accurate. Again, so uh, does AI train in real time? So this is the fourth question. So um, in our case, no, it does not do that because uh, we have two systems. One is a trainer script on Python, we use certain, uh, you know, Python algorithms and certain libraries to generate scripts where the data is read and a model is created. The other section is basically in the plugin itself. So once you feed this model to the plugin, we have a real time decoder. So what it does, it reads this model and it has a system of weights and using those weights, again, I'm not going to go too technical, but using these weights, it determines what exactly is happening with the processing, you know, whether it's an envelope happening or there's saturation happening, there's compression happening, there's an EQ curve, there's an, you know, sound response, all of those kind of things happen within the model and the real time system on the plugin end reads that model that we feed it after we have trained it. So there are two processes. One is training the model, which is pre-trained, and the other is reading that model, which is inside the plugin. So the next topic is distortion capture versus compression capture using AI. So again, like I said, uh, you know, we claim our LVL01 to be the first 
um, you know, AI-based compressor model derived from analog hardware. Now, when people say that they've done this before, they were basically claiming or citing examples of plugins which are using machine learning for basic distortion like pedals and things like that. See, in that case, you don't need so many layers of capture. It's a very basic kind of model which captures a few seconds and it, you know, kind of expands on that. When you're capturing compression, you know, there's a lot more things at play. There are more layers. Uh, of course, it's a time domain system. So again, you're, you know, checking out what's happening to your result over a period of time. Right? That increases the size of your model. Uh, there are very systems like LSTM and GRU which are used in this and you find the right kind of system. Again, without going too technical, Basically, capturing a compressor is way more difficult and it has more analyzing things, um, you know, required with the AI than just a simple distortion capture. Hence, I believe we are unique in this. Anyway, uh, till now. <laughs> again, uh, will, AI uh, will AI plugins replace my older plugins? So that's, again, a very valid question, you know, since AI technology is coming at play and, uh, you know, we're throwing this term around a lot, uh, what is going to mean for your older plugins? So, well, like I said, you know, horses for courses, tools for things, people still use an EMU sampler. There are obviously much higher grade samplers available today. Why do they do that? Because they like the sound and the workflow. So obviously, if you like your uh, solid state plugins and they deliver to you what you like, you need not change them. That's not going to change the way, uh, you know, you work. Yes, maybe, uh, you know, sound wise, AI will naturally improve uh, the quality of the processors. But still, I guess, you know, like in your older sessions or certain things you like too much, would you stop using it just because it's made with an older technology? I doubt that would happen. So I guess you keep your plugins. But yes, certainly the new ground of, uh, you know, where, as far as accuracy is concerned with analog hardware, if that's the goal then AI and machine learning will certainly become a more powerful and more advanced method than circuit modeling. So, yeah, maybe uh, for certain new things, you might want to consider AI plugins, you know, in your as you expand your tool set. Again, so AI in mixing and DAWs future, the future of DAWs. So this is very interesting. This is a kind of speculative question. Uh, nobody's done this yet. I mean, I've not seen a commercial model working, but yes, I guess, uh, you know, the major DAWs will have to consider um, you know, the option of using AI in uh, mixing um, duties, right? So if it is able to analyze material and able to give it an end result, uh, it can also probably, you know, move faders for you, uh, choose plugins for you, uh, choose uh, dynamic systems, uh, you know, sonic imprints, IRs, uh, shapes of EQ, um, you know, effects also. Like it can analyze probably a mix at a later stage and see, okay, what's going on with the family of sounds here? They've used a chorus here, they've used a reverb here. AI yeah, can certainly make those decisions for you. Will DAWs implement it and how soon? I can't say. But certainly, yeah, that reduces the load of mixing for certain type of people. I guess... Uh, you know, there is a fun in mixing. <laughs> so, like, if there's a fun in painting and creating and playing piano. I think AI, uh, even if it does that, it doesn't uh, remove the human need of expression, right? I suppose it'll just be a tool when you need it or for, you know, novices or beginners. Uh, but some people like to cook the meal from scratch. They also want to make the rice and they want to do, uh, make the pasta from the, you know, the wheat and all of that. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. So I guess it'll all exist in parallel. These, again, will just be tools you can choose to use or not choose to use. It's going to take over or something. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay. Um, then it comes down to another question, which is, is random parameterization also AI? So, yeah, this is something which is confusing to people. So many manufacturers will throw the word AI, although what their plugin is doing at that point of time is just randomizing parameters. So sometimes there is no intelligence behind it. Uh, you can create code for generating random numbers in a computer, you know, in computer language. So basically that's what it's doing. You set ranges and you can generate random numbers and it can change around. You can, of course, have certain other conditions and values put in place to further optimize it or further control it. But that's just random number generation. It has nothing to do with AI. AI is basically a system which analyzes what's going on, thinks about it, has a reference point and then makes decisions. So that's for parameterization alone. So I guess uh, I've busted a few myths here. I hope this has been informative for you. So that's it. Again, if you have some comments or you think that uh, you want to add on to what I'm saying or if there's something you want to dispute, <laughs> either way, all comments are welcome. I'd love to obviously listen from you as I do. Uh, this is a new exciting thing for me is, uh, you know, communicating with my audience. And if YouTube be the medium, so be it. Excellent. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, can I ask for a like? If not, no problem. No problem at all. Enjoy and uh, subscribe if you like this content. It certainly encourages me to see those numbers go up and makes me want to do more videos. 
again i'll see you in another video